Hi guys, good morning. This is Alex Steele with Mod Shapes, and today I'm going to demonstrate for you how you can use Fusion 360 to solve a technical problem. I have in my possession now a dial indicator. As you press this down, this gives you an indication of depth. Machinists use these means I have a 3D printer that I'm going to use this on. This will tell me if there is a, a flaw in the print bed, it will tell me if the surface is right. If I use this correctly, it should shave off a lot of time. There is a user out there, 3D Print Nova, has made this really cool print that sits on top. It has a hole right here for the mount. It clips on the bottom. My only problem is and the hole is a little too small. So when I go to use it, not functioning. I've used th Fusion 360. I brought the original file into Fusion 360. It created from scratch, basically looking at a sculpted item, and I built it from geometry. It's parametrically shaped inside of Fusion 360. I have created this file, and I'm going to make it available on Thingiverse as a remix as of the release of this video. And as I'm working on this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, show you exactly how I did it. And here we're going to do a little deep diving. So if you're not familiar with the Fusion 360, um, you can import. And so when I initially started this process, I inserted a DXF file. And when I did that, that brought me to this step. And you can see here very clearly, this is the model that Nova created. And I created a sketch. It is just a profile outlining. Now, I also use my micrometer, and uh, if you're not familiar with what that is, it's a digital caliper. And what that allows me to do is get the precise millimeter measurements. Okay, and so you can see here I have this really cool profile here. Now, the next thing that I did was simply extrude this geometry, and I chose 11 millimeters because I made this, I beefed it up by one millimeter. The next thing I did was I created the second sketch. So the next thing I did was I extruded that sketch. And you can see that here, just like that. This is about 1.88 millimeter. This is uh, how this is coming together here. You can see it in panning in. Um, the next step is I extended some faces. Uh, when I extended the face, you'll notice, uh, especially right in this area here, I want, I wanted that to be uh, flush, created a, uh, a box, and I positioned it. Initially, this side mount was fairly flush here, so let's go back into our process to about right here, and let's look at the front of this, and let's go ahead and bring this over so that it's flush. Uh, go ahead and say okay. That's going to change things a little tiny bit, but this is the beauty and this is why I wanted to show you about how powerful Fusion 360 is. So after we move the file, we create the hole. Now, as I recreated the hole, I'm also looking at the original mesh. Now things have moved just a little bit, but that's okay. Um, because initially, this indicator hole was even on the uh, geometry that's put, it's, it's about right there. So now we um, have that. We can remove that from the view for a moment. And you can see a series of fillet. This is basically just these two front lines. And then we just keep moving on um, so that all these edges get rounded. And then the final combination, export. And from here, I'm going to choose the step files. Um, I'm going to save it here. Now, what if your dial indicator is thicker or thinner than mine? This is a, a set of digital caliper. And this particular one can be switched between inches and millimeters. I personally always work with the metric system when I'm doing any 3D modeling or jewelry design. Use it in this method, sliding this in and pulling it will give you an indication of the exact millimeter of that hole. But the problem that we ran into is that this design was originally done by Nova. And it's a perfectly great design, but it's, it's only for a specific diameter of this. So 
and I'm going for the spot right in here, 0.05 millimeters. So I say 8.05 millimeters, okay, that's great. And let's determine what that hole size should be. Okay, so from in here, what we're gonna do is, let's come back over here to this particular place, right here, when I made the hole. When I made the hole, we say, we look at it from the top, and, and again, you know, I, I did I did look at the mesh body. But right here is my diameter setting. So if you download this file, and you find that your dial indicator for your Tevo is thicker or thinner than that, you can use a micrometer or a set of digital calipers, whichever way you like to refer to it, and you can go ahead and measure that, then come into this step right here. All right, so set accordingly. You'll come in here, you'll double click on that, you'll change that value to match whatever it is in your particular situation, and then you will have your custom size. And uh, if you're using the Tebo Tornado with a different size mount, this should work. Also, if you're running Fusion 360, it should be super simple for you to make that change. Okay, what we're going to do now is to get this geometry out. We've got two things. I've exported the file, which I showed you, and now I'm going to say make 3D print. Now, this is the reason why the last step in this is to combine the parts. Uh, click on the item that you want, and in Fusion 360 you have two choices. You can directly send the geometry into Simplify 3D, or whatever print utility you have. I personally use Simplify 3D, but what your, your custom settings are. Or, uncheck that, hit OK, and it will prompt you to save the part. Now I've already done this, and our, our combined part is already inserted Simplify 3D, and I would like to just show you a little bit about the, the mounts. So I flipped this on its side when it came in. It's it's set, it's it's a it's a rotated to 90 degrees on the x axis, and the reason I did that is because that is the simplest way in my uh, the way that I organized this file to get the best results with a little bit of support. And Simplify 3D allows you some very specific kind of support generation. Here's what I did just to give you a re recap. First, I generate automatic support. This looks great to me, but I see this little place over here that I may worry, and it's not that bad, but let's go ahead and say, add new support structure. Infill, in this case, I'm going for 50%. Now what that gives me here is an indication. Now this is fantastic because you can see the different feature types here. You can see, oh, support is this color, and we're looking at external single extrusion is this color. Uh, solid layer inside right here, but what happens in here as it's building is we have the infill here. Right, and then it just builds itself up. This is fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is, at this point, save the tool baths. So now I'm going to jump over to the Octoprint scenario. Um, okay, so you can see here, I have on my screen, this is the original part, right? Um, and, you know, it's fantastic. But let's see what, and you can see the difference here. This is a very different dial indicator. So now, Let's take a look at Octoprint. I had just finished printing this awesome medallion, which I should probably take a picture of later and put it up. But uh, what we do here is we, uh, we upload, and we choose our G code here. Okay. Okay. And now that part is available and ready. I can also now go ahead and start that print. I have to go monitor the first layer. As you know, the first layer is the most important one.
original one wouldn't fit mine fits so they look really similar i'm gonna fix a few things on this model beef this up a little is holding it just maybe a little too 